Hello and welcome to CompSci 1MG3 lecture for Thursday, April 1st. Um, I have a very important question to start off today's lecture. How is the audio quality? Does it sound impeccable, pristine? Because um, what we have right here on our recording setup is a very fancy mic, an expensive mic, like 4.8 stars on Amazon. So there is uh, no reason why we shouldn't be getting like phenomenal audio quality. And if we are not getting phenomenal audio quality, that probably means I messed up the software settings for this mic or accidentally hit the sensitivity knob. So let me know and I will quickly rectify the uh, audio if it sounds not uh, 11 out of 10. Um, but yeah, so you may be wondering where is Dr. Moore right now? Um, essentially, what has happened in this class is I have launched a nonviolent coup and taken over the leadership of CompSci 1MD3. So for all intents and purposes, I am now the captain. But um, this will only last for, uh, for one day because Dr. Moore will be back Monday. You'll have your beloved professor back then. And... Uh, but he's just a bit busy for the next few days. Uh, but yeah, in a few days, Dr. Moore will be back and he will be leading lecture again next week. Uh, but in the meantime, unfortunately for you guys, you are stuck with me for today's class. Um, fortunately, today's class is a very uh, easy uh, class. We're just going to go over uh, JSONs and what they are. And we only have like 16 slides to go through. We'll be finishing all of the topic uh, nine slides, which is mainly just on JSONs and a wee bit on XMLs. Baby? Okay, I'm not too sure what baby, baby means, but um, yeah, so if you can just let me know what the, the issue is, uh, avert, uh, proxy, and uh, uh, we, will, we will solve that problem. Um, cool, so we will be starting at 9.30 on the dot. So if you guys want to keep me on mute or tune out until then, no worries, totally understand. Um, also, today's topic is just on JSON. So if you think you can you know, figure that out without my uh, uh, lecturing, by all means. Uh, my purpose here is just to help uh, you know, assist in understanding the lecture content. Cool, so we'll be starting in three minutes. If you have any questions at all, please post them in the YouTube comments and I will get a notification and I will, uh, at the YouTube live stream chat, and I'll get a notification and look at your question uh, immediately. And um, yeah, yeah, I look forward to today's class. <clears throat> and my hair is all messed up. <clears throat> oh, I was like saying, because, oh, you told you, I was keeping that quiet. I thought that was like a personal thing. But yeah, he's having a baby. Isn't that like amazing? Like, that's so phenomenal. I thought he was like 25 when I met him. So I thought he was like, like way younger than that. But um, yeah, he's married and all that stuff, apparently. Like I thought when he was talking about his kids, he was talking about his cat and he was just like a really big pet person. So I was like, wow, this guy is so, so cat enthusiastic. But yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Gr great for him. Very, uh, very exciting. <clears throat> so yeah, we'll be starting in just one minute at 9.30 on the dot. Um, if you want, you can access today's lecture slides by navigating to Avenue to Learn and downloading the topic nine slides. Uh, it is titled um, File I.O. It is titled, um, it is based on files. It is the files-topic nine slide. So we will be starting in one minute now. And yes, we have very few people. That is awesome. <laughs> we'll make this less uh, less difficult. So I think we have 13 people right now. Okay, good, good. <clears throat> okay, yeah, cool, cool. Okay, it is 9.30, so I will now be starting class. Um, I'll be shutting off the ba uh, the video feed to conserve bandwidth to hopefully ensure there is no lagging. But I have terrible Wi-Fi, so there probably will be. And I will now be sharing my screen. 
cool. Okay. So um, in today's lecture, we will be talking about uh, JSONs. Now, so far in the course, whenever we have done file IO, uh, inputting and outputting data by reading and writing uh, files, we have done this all uh, with text and CSV files. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, but the industry standard for uh, communicating data via you know, file types is with JSONs. JSONs are a much more popular method for this type of communication. And I hope over the course of this lesson, it is obvious why JSONs are just way more useful. So uh, more likely, you'll be using the JSON techniques that we'll be talking about today, later on in your computer science careers. We'll also be talking a bit about XMLs, but, um, <clears throat> but uh, XMLs are way less popular than JSONs. Um, at no point in this course will we ask you to ever manipulate data that's in an XML file. So you won't have to worry about um, the Python uh, syntax or code to get that done. We'll just be talking about it from a tertiary perspective for um, additional knowledge. But JSONs are definitely a very useful concept that we'll be using over and over in the course from this point on. Cool. Uh, so if any of you are familiar with uh, CAD by any chance, JSONs are essentially the step files of computer science. They are a standard way for different web applications to communicate with each other. Now, JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. And as you can guess from the name, uh, this was originally built for JavaScript. But since then, it has become a cross-platform way for different um, web applications to easily communicate with each other. Pretty much any API you can think of will have the option to output or input data in the JSON format. <clears throat> so it's very similar to step files in CAD in that way. Now, how do we make a JSON file? Well, in the exact same way that I can write a text file or CSV file, I can write, I can also write a JSON file. So what I'll do now is I will open up my text editor. So um, I can open up a text editor like Notepad that will be fancy today and use Notepad++. So we get a nice uh, syntax. Right, so um, in the exact same way where if I wanted to make a text file, I would just save my file as something.txt in an appropriate folder. So I'll just navigate to work, comp sci, winter, lecture folder. Cool. So if I wanted to make a text file, I would just save my file as some name, let's say hello.txt. So I can just write .txt, or I can select the .txt file type. And now any data I save in this file, or any plain text I save in this file, will be stored in the text file. Um, likewise, I can make a CSV in a similar way. I can just save it uh, as a .csv file. So I can save my file as hello.csv. Find that. comma separated. Okay, or we can just write .csv, that works too. <laughs> um, and essentially with the CSV file, uh, I have comma separated values. So which means essentially I have very similar to an Excel format. I have values like um, uh, if I wanted to make a table with um, of different types of cars, I could have uh, a car name or a, a car brand and then the color of that car, and then the year. <clears throat> and then I can have my data accordingly. So I can have a Hyundai, that's blue, and was made in 2010. I can have a Toyota, that's red, and was made in uh, uh, 2013. As you can see in this instance, uh, all of the values in each row are separated by a comma. I added a white space too, but that's not necessary. Um, and then each row is separated by the new line character, which as we talked about in um, previous weeks is included in the text file. So here's how I would make a CSV. And if I wanted to make a JSON, um, similarly, I can just save my file as a .json. <clears throat> so I'll save this as hello.json. 
So I'll just scroll down to wherever JSON is, or I can write .json at the end of my file type. It does the same same thing. Uh, this should I was replace it anyway. Anyways, I'll close this, and we'll save hello as a .json. <clears throat> cool. Okay. Um, so in a similar way that the CSV file, let me get right. The CSV file had a, had a particular syntax for separating our values with commas. Uh, JSON files also have another specific syntax. Uh, the syntax is very similar to a Python dictionary. So essentially, to make a JSON file, I make two uh, curly braces. And encapsulated inside the curly braces is the content of my JSON. Now, JSON follows a key value system, so I can specify a key. Like, let's suppose I wanted to make a JSON that described our uh, premier, Doug Ford. So I'd write uh, different attributes or keys, like his name, which is Doug Ford, and then his age, which I looked up last night was 56, and his uh, birthplace, which is uh, Toronto, or Toronto. <clears throat> So in the JSON format, um, any strings are encapsulated inside uh, quotation marks, just like with Python. And the keys and values are separated by commas. And then every line is ended with a comma. Sorry, the, the keys and values are separated by colons. And every line is ended with a comma. Cool. Let me just check the comments quickly, then I'll move on. So we'll go here and... Can you zoom in on the screen? OK, that was a good thing I checked. So let us go to let us go to settings. View. Okay, let me just increase the text size very quickly. So increase text size. Okay, settings, say styles configurator, and we'll change this to 24. Okay. Uh, So it's control uh, plus that increases the size. OK, so my apologies about that. Let me just reiterate what I said about the JSONs. So with the JSON file type, there is a very particular syntax that we have to follow. And so to make this syntax, essentially, I make two curly braces. And inside the curly braces is all of the content for the JSON. The content is organized in key value pairs. So if I wanted to describe uh, Doug Ford, I would list keys, like his name, and then a colon with the name content his uh, age, and a colon, and his uh, birthplace, his birthplace. Cool. Um, and I can fill in these uh, values appropriately. So his name so his name is Doug Ford, his age is 56, and his birthplace is Toronto. So just like with Python, all of these strings are encapsulated inside quotes, and um, ints can just be left as his. OK, so I will now save my JSON. So this is a JSON file. And, and in the exact same way that we can read a text file in Python, we can also read a, a JSON file uh, when we want to, which I will now demonstrate. So words, OK. Uh, yes, yeah, so let me know if it's still difficult to read. But I hope that's uh, more clear. When did Albi send that message? 9.35, OK. <clears throat> OK, so I will now open up Python. Cool, and I will make a new Python program. And I will save this in the same folder. 
as my comp sci uh, directory. So I'll go to work comp sci winter, and this was in the lecture folder. Cool. And I will make a new Python program. I can give this any name. I'll just call it read underscore JSON. Cool. And the syntax to read a JSON file, it's very similar to reading a uh, any other text file. <clears throat> cool. So in order to read my file, I'm going to make uh, a new file variable. Uh, there are a couple of ways I can do this. Uh, I can either write, um, you know, fh is equal to open and just write the file name, which in this case is hello.json. And I can write it in the uh, particular reading format. So I can specify to open it in the read format. And I'll say this file object is equal to the variable f. I can make it equal to any variable. I'll say it's equal to f. Um, then I can read the contents of f. So I can say contents is equal to f.read. Uh, but when we read the file, it'll be in the special uh, JSON format. So what we'll want to do is we'll want to parse what the file says. Like I can print out what cont is right now, but it's not going to be that useful. So if I run my module, Okay, so it's in this format here, but I can't really uh, parse the file as needed. So for example, if I type cont uh, zero, what do we get? We get just, it's this is kind of uh, formatted as a string, which isn't really what we want. Um, because this data is organized so neatly in our JSON, it's probably much more useful if we import this into our Python program instead of just a plain text string as being a dictionary because that way we can look up commands much more easily. So fortunately, Python is something known as the uh, JSON library, which I can import. And with the JSON library, I can actually automatically parse any JSON into a dictionary. And once my JSON is a dictionary, it's much easier to look up contents <clears throat> or look up uh, things in the JSON. So let me just check the comments again. Okay. That's good to hear. So let me know if there are any other pressing uh, issues. OK, so um, what we'll now do is we'll read our JSON as a actual dictionary. And that'll make it much easier to parse. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new variable called dict, or not dict, uh, how about dict1. And I'll say that's equal to json.loads. Uh, dot loads content. So what JSON dot loads does is it parses the JSON content into a dictionary. And that makes it much easier for us to manipulate this data in Python when the data is in a dictionary instead of a plain text string. So let me run my module. Uh, and we got a small issue. JSON. JSON, did I make a type? No, it says, and expecting a delimiter, did I? Oh, I, uh, my apologies, I made a typo with my um, with my JSON. So let me, re so um, I had this colon here that I typed by accident, so let me get rid of that. And let me run this again. <clears throat> okay, so as you can see this time, when I don't have my typo in my JSON, the code executes successfully. And so we once again have these two variables, cont, and we have uh, dict1. Obviously, dict1 is much easier to parse. Like, for example, if I want the name value in my dictionary, I just type dict1 to uh, brackets, and I specify the key for the value I want. So if I want the name value, I just type in name, which is the name what that key is referred to as, and I get back the corresponding value. If I want uh, the age, I just type in the age, and I get back whatever age was specified. <coughs> cool. 
Um, and so obviously it's much easier to work with this data in a dictionary format as opposed to being uh, in this plain text or string format. And this is really why JSON is a, a much more popular way to pass data around because it's already organized so neatly that makes it so simple for us to look up uh, uh, whatever values are needed. So we can also make our own JSON files in addition to reading them in the exact same way that we would make uh, or write uh, other text or CSV files. So um, what I'm going to do is I will say, make a new file and I'll save this as write JSON to demonstrate how I would write a JSON file. And we all cool with this text size. Let me just check the comments. How does Python interpret a JSON file that contains multiple separated dictionaries? That is a great question. We are going to talk about that right after uh, we talk about writing JSONs, but you're ahead of me. I, I'm not going fast enough for, uh, for you, Jacob, but we will get to your question right after we talk about writing the JSONs. So in the exact same way I can make a text file or a CSV file in Python, I can also make a JSON file, which I will now demonstrate. <clears throat> so I've made a new Python file called write JSON, and I want to make a JSON. Uh, so to do that, I am going to, um, <clears throat> so essentially in Python, if I try to open up a, a file that doesn't exist in write mode, Python will automatically generate that file. So if I go to my compsci one md 3 directory, which you can see here, you can see that there is no file called um, write.json. So if I try to open up a file, <clears throat> uh, if I try to make a new file, say f, that's equal to open write.json, I try to open it up in write mode, Python will automatically generate that file. <clears throat> so we can demonstrate this, uh, but first we need some content to write to the JSON. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new dictionary, an empty dictionary, and I'll add some values to my dictionary. So I'll say that uh, <clears throat> I'll make the values about, uh, about you guys. So I'll say that um, student one, one is equal to So we have, I think, three students that made, four students that made the mistake of commenting. So we have avert proxy, uh, I'll just say avert Eric, Albie, and Jacob. So uh, I can store these values in my dictionary. I'll have uh, four items, avert, Albie, Eric, and Jacob. Cool. So now I have this dictionary of values, and I'm going to write this dictionary to uh, to my JSON. Uh, just to demonstrate how this dictionary looks like, I'll print it out. <clears throat> cool. So as you can see, uh, the dictionary format is very similar to a JSON format. That's why we want to, um, it makes it really easy for us to write this to a JSON. So, uh, I'm now going to write this data to my JSON. And in order to do that, I once again need to use the JSON library, which I can import by writing import JSON. And then I'll just uh, kind of parse my dictionary into a JSON. So to do that, um, I'll make, make a new variable content and I'll say that's equal to json.dumps uh, dict1. So uh, this time, I am dumping dict1 into this JSON method, and that outputs like a JSON type content, which I can then write to my uh, F, which I can then write to my file. Um, and whenever we are done uh, working with a file in Python, we should always close that file, and we can do that by writing f dot close, and that closes the file that we are working with. So let me run my module again. Awesome. So now if I go back to that same directory, we now have this write JSON file. And if I open this up, you can see it contains the same content that was in our dictionary. We have all of the same values, uh, Avert, Albi, Eric, and Jacob. 
So that's how we make a JSON in Python. <clears throat> um, so a few things I want to point out. So uh, when I try to open up a file that doesn't exist in Python, Python will automatically generate a blank file with the same name. That's why when I tried to open up a write.json and it didn't exist, Python generated the file write.json. But it only does that when you open up the file in write mode. If I try to open up a file that doesn't exist in read mode, uh, Python will generate an error. So as you can see, there is no file called write2.json in this directory. So if I try to open up that file, it will give us an error saying that file doesn't exist. Uh, the second thing I want to mention is that it's really important whenever we are, especially when we are writing to files, that we always close the file at the end. Uh, so let's say I made a new file called write2.json, and I forgot to close the file. So if I run my code again, <clears throat> as you can see, uh, so if I... I open it up. As you can see, even though we ran the same code, because we forgot to close it, Python uh, messed up and it didn't correctly print the file. And this issue is caused by us not closing the file. If I run the code again, uh, this time, if I go back to the same file and I open it up, you can see it was updated correctly. Now, if you're lazy or you forget to close the file, you can also write the file manipulation in different syntax. And that syntax is the following. <clears throat> so you can, you absolutely can uh, do the file manipulation in this way, where I write, um, I make a new file object, then I write f.write, f.close. Or what I can do, is I can write with open my file name, which I will say is, uh, let's say, write3.json. And I will open it up in write mode once again as the following variable name. And then inside of the context manager, or also known as the with keyword, I can do my uh, manipulation. And this will automatically uh, close the file when the contact when the context manager is terminated. So now if I go back to my uh, directory, there is this file write three that we just generated, write three.json. And if I open that up, it is the exact same uh, file. So both methods work uh, perfectly fine. Um, <coughs> I guess if you're asking which method is more correct, I would say this method is more correct because all of the smart people I know generally do uh, do it this way, the file IO. But I think this one is a bit easier for um, students to understand. But both of these work the same way. So if um, you don't understand uh, either of these methods for opening up files, just let me know and we can talk about it in more detail. Uh, and then the last caveat I guess I should mention is that all of these uh, files, by default, Python assumes any file you specify is in the same name as our program. So we have our program write underscore JSON, and all of the files are in the same directory. If I had a file in a different directory, let's say you know I had a new folder called uh, you know, dir1, a new directory called dir1, and I wanted to open up a file in that directory, To open up that file specifically, I would have to specify the absolute or relative file path to this directory. So if I wanted to open up uh, the file, let me rename this uh, hello in directory.json. If I wanted to open up that file in dir1, I would have to specify the file path. So dir1 or dot slash dir1, I could also do. Uh, <clears throat> dir1 uh, and the file name, which was hello in dir. And Python is so smart, it actually automatically figures out that uh, the file in the directory. Awesome. And um, I can write my file, write to my file in the exact same way. <clears throat> so if I open this up, 
contains the exact same content. Awesome. Okay, let me check the comments and then we'll move on. Okay, no comments. Awesome. <clears throat> and good thing I turned off the uh, the video cam. Okay, so um, the next thing I wanted to talk about was the fact that in Python, if I go back to the JSON example that we had, sorry, with JSONs, we can actually have in the exact same way we have nested list, nested JSONs. So we can have JSONs that contain JSONs inside of them, which I will now demonstrate. So if I go back to my example, uh, edit with Notepad++. So in the exact same way we can have like nested dictionaries or dictionaries inside of dictionaries, we can also make the values in a JSON more JSONs. So let me demonstrate how this looks like. So let's say I wanted to make a new JSON of all the premiers in uh, in Ontario. So I will save my new JSON. It's premiers.json. Cool. And once again, to make my JSON, I have to start by making two curly braces. And all of my content is encapsulated inside of those curly braces. So now instead of just having the data of um, one premier, let's say I want to have the, the data for all the premiers organized correctly. So I can have like multiple values like um, on tier. Why is that? Oh, because it's not in a string. So I can have uh, multiple provinces, like let's say British Columbia, uh, we're not going to do all of them just for time, but Ontario, I think those are the only premiers I know, so I might need some help, and then Alberta, Alberta's Jason Kenny, I think, yeah, Jason Kenny. Okay, so let's say I wanted to store the data for all the premiers in my JSON, and I want to organize them so that each uh, value is a JSON itself. So I can do that like so. If I go back to hello.csv, or I can just write the data again. So instead of having my value for the JSON be some text or be uh, an int, a number, I can actually have the value be a JSON itself. And so I can read this data, or I can uh, just make this new JSON. So we'll say the, uh, the name is Doug Ford. His age is 50, or let's just say 55. And his, uh, his birthplace was Toronto. Shoot. Awesome. And likewise, I can, uh, make similar JSONs as the values for the other keys, uh, British Columbia and Alberta. Okay, I know the name for the Alberta Premier is uh, Jason Kenny. I do not know much else about him, so let's assume some data. Let's say he's 100 years old, he's an old dude. And his birthplace was uh, Calgary. <clears throat> And for BC, I also don't know the guy's name. I'll look that up instead of, instead of making up uh, a fake name. But so the BC premier, that is John Horgan. Seems like a nice guy. Okay, John Horgan. His age is, uh, he's 18 years old, a young dude, as old as all of you guys. And he was born in my favorite place in British Columbia, Kitimat. I don't know if he was born in Kitimat, though, but let's just pretend. Okay, cool. <clears throat> so these are all the values in our JSON. And what we have here is a nested JSON, or JSONs inside JSONs. So for each of our JSON values in the main JSON, the value itself is another JSON. And indexing works in the exact same way it would work with like a dictionary. So let me save premiers.json, and I am going to read that into my uh, thing, premiers.json, 
And so now I'm now reading the premieres.json file in Python. OK, cool. So if I type content, you get back this you know, ugly plain text of all of the data. But if I type dict1, we get back a nicely organized uh, nested dictionary of all the data. Data. So if I type dict1 uh, British Columbia, you get back uh, the specific JSON or dictionary value for British Columbia. And then if I want to get a, a value inside of that dictionary, I would do the indexing in the exact same way we've done so far to get nested values inside of a dictionary. So I just type another index, uh, another set of square brackets for another index. And I type in, let's say, the name to get back the name for the BC Premier. And we get back John Horgan. Cool. So to answer your question, that is how we would uh, interpret a JSON file that contains multiple separated dictionaries. <clears throat> Oh, but did you mean multiple dictionaries like nested inside of each other? Or do you mean multiple uh, JSONs, one after another? Um, whenever I've seen, I, maybe I'm not sure about this, whenever I've seen JSONs, there's only been like one JSON in the entire file. I'm not sure if you could do that. I, I can look that up, but I wasn't aware that um we would put multiple JSONs, like separate JSONs in the same file. But I can look that up for you, uh, uh, Jacob. But let me know if I answered your question, though. But my que I assume from your question you're asking about nested, uh, nested JSONs. But um, from my understanding, we don't put multiple JSONs in the same file. But I can look that up uh, once I get a break. <clears throat> OK. Awesome. So let us move on. So um, you may be wondering at this point, what is the uh, like whole purpose to learning about uh, JSONs and the JSON uh, format? And the thing is, is that any API or web service or web application probably does some communication with JSONs because it is so easy to quickly uh, parse and send data with this format. And it's such a great way to communicate between languages uh, as well. So we can actually demonstrate some APIs uh, that allow us to um, to fetch data in a JSON format. And to do this, we will go to everyone's favorite um, Instagram page. And you know what that is. So let me navigate to Instagram. Cool. And we'll go to our favorite page, uh, SixBuzz. And as you can see here, we have the uh, SixBuzz Instagram page. So on this Instagram page, there is like tons of metadata about like all of these posts and such. And Instagram actually provides an API that lets us get a JSON of all of this metadata all at once. So if, for example, I wanted to make a program that would scrape Instagram and like, uh, like collect all of this metadata, I can do that automatically by using the API that Instagram provides. Um, a web API is essentially like a URL URL that I can navigate to that will like either return or um, uh, store some data, depending upon which uh, request that I use. So if I, for example, type in, uh, you can do this on your own computers as well. If you go to any Instagram page and you add the following characters to the end of the uh, Instagram URL, it'll automatically generate a, a JSON of all of the metadata. So all you have to do is type in a uh, question mark, underscore, underscore, A equals one. What this is going to do is it will generate, um, the A stands for all, so it'll generate uh, a JSON of all of the metadata on this uh, page. And as you can see, there are a lot of posts on this page, so it's going to be a very, uh, a very long JSON. But yeah, if you press enter, what that does is it generates this huge uh, wall of text and it's not gibberish, it's actually a really complicated uh, JSON. So for example, uh, if I go back to the page, so like if you look at the bio for the, uh, uh, the page, it says website, it has all of this content in the bio. So if I go to the biography uh, key, for example, right here, has the exact same uh, text 
It has the exact same text that's some parsing as we see in the bio for the six buzz page. And this works for any Instagram page. Like if I go to the Instagram page, for example, uh, Justin Trudeau, <laughs> There we go. And if I add the exact same characters on the end, uh, question mark underscore underscore a equals one. I, I think that was it, yeah. So this will once again generate um, an API. This API will once again generate the JSON in the exact same way. So as you can see, his bio is like father, husband, 23rd prime minister of Canada. Uh, exact same bio is in the JSON that we called. And this, of course, is a very complicated net, uh, nested JSON, but the data is organized in a convenient way that um, is specified in the Instagram documentation. Like if I were to save this file, <clears throat> it would save as a, as a JSON because this is in a JSON format. We are getting a, a JSON page back when we enter in this URL. Like normally when we enter in a URL, we get back an HTML page or an XML page. But now with this API, when I enter in my URL, I get back this JSON. So I can go to like C uh, uh, work, shoot, uh, comp sci, winter 2021. And I can save the JSON in the exact same way. <clears throat> uh, lecture. Uh, Insta or IG JSON, uh, JSON. Cool. And so the JSON file will download accordingly and it will be inside of the same uh, folder so I can read it in the exact same way. I just update my read JSON file. Cool. And I will run my code. And so now if I call uh, dict1, it's, it's very long, so it doesn't really show up in the Python interpreter. My computer might crash. OK, I'm going to close this before my computer crashes. But as you can see, it has the exact same data that we parsed. But it's so long, this might fill up my, my cache. So I'm going to close this. OK, uh, cool. And once again, I can, if I wanted to, I could update the uh, read lines, the code to read into the uh, newer Python format uh, with open, you know, so on and so forth. But I like to do it in this format instead because I think that's easier for uh, students to understand. It's more sequential, line by line. But the with open format is probably better. So let me just demonstrate that for you all. So if I type with open uh, and then the thing that I'm opening, which is this, as f, and then I can read the file accordingly. <clears throat> and then once I exit the uh, with context manager, Python will automatically uh, close the file. So I won't have to uh, uh, you know, close it manually. OK, cool. So that is the syntax for uh, reading a file with the with context manager. OK, cool. Let me check the comments, then I'll move on to the XML stuff. Can you see the code to read premiers again? Is there a way to only get part of that JSON? OK, uh, great question. So here is the code for uh, premiers. It's not really code. It's just a uh, text file. Like You can just copy and paste this text into any other file and just save it accordingly. <clears throat> oh, did it? Oh, I guess it, there's a cutoff limit. My apologies. But yeah, so, so that's the, um, the text and the JSON. Is there a way to only get part of that JSON? That is a great question, Dorian. So I was trying that for a long time last night. But um, like normally with, uh, with how these APIs work, is if you specify like a specific variable, like and biography, that would only give back the biography. But uh, this API doesn't seem to work in that way. So yeah, that that was kind of annoying. Um, I didn't want to show this API initially because it was so long. I wanted to show the uh, Facebook API. So if I go to like uh, Facebook, for example, uh, 
So if I go to uh, like a, a Facebook page, or let me go to uh, another Facebook page, like if I go to the McMaster University Facebook page, Cool. So if I type a uh, graph.facebook.com, what this should do is it should generate um, just the graph data, which is just like the name, the ID, and way fewer values than in the Instagram uh, uh, JSON. <clears throat> but the problem is, I guess this was a recent change, but now when you do this, you have to pass in like a token to authenticate you're not a robot. So you do get a JSON back, but you get back this error JSON saying like you have to pass in a token. So, um, but yeah, so I'm not sure how to limit the number of uh, values in the, the Instagram API JSON. If anyone does, let me know, because I, I couldn't figure that out. There, there are other APIs that you can use that instead of giving you back all of the data, gives you back just the data you want. But I wasn't too sure um, like what the the URL syntax for those APIs are that um, don't require you to use a session variable, like a, like a session authentication token. Um, so there are tons of easier APIs to use, but you have to set up like an authentication token, all this other stuff we don't have time for and is irrelevant. So yeah, um, I hope that answers your question, Dorian, and then Sierra, and then Jacob. I was thinking of multiple distinct dictionaries, but I guess we could have put them behind different keys. Yeah, so my assumption was like you were talking about a nested dictionary, but um, let, let me look this up because I'm not sure. Can can a JSON file have multiple JSONs? My assumption is no. Like it all needs to be inside one JSON. Yeah, yeah. So if you want to have uh yeah, so if you want to have multiple JSONs inside the same file, it still needs to be uh encapsulated inside one object or one set of braces. But what we can use instead of making it a, a nested JSON is we can just make a list like this, and then I can have uh multiple JSON values. We have our first uh, JSON, which was the Premier's one. Then I can copy another JSON, like let's say, okay, let's say the student JSON we made. Okay. <clears throat> cool. And so I will save this as uh, multiple. JSONs, JSON, cool. So now if I go back to Python, so this time our JSON file contains an array of JSONs, but we can read it with pretty much the same syntax. So what I will do is I will update my file name to be multiple JSON. Was it JSON or JSONs? multiple JSONs. Okay, cool. And then I'll change my variable for it to make more sense to be uh, JSONs. Okay, cool. So once again, we have our variables cont and JSONs. And so JSONs is an array. So if I type JSONs zero, I get back the first JSON. If I type JSONs one, I get back the second JSON. And then I, uh, the JSONs array values are dictionaries themselves. So if I want to get back uh, a specific value in the JSON, I would just type student one to get back, let's say, the first student's name. And that gives back a vert. So uh, if you want to have multiple JSONs, you can have them nested, as you see here. Or you can have them all inside of a, an array, as you see here. And the JSON.loads will parse them uh, very neatly. OK, cool. <clears throat> well, I don't know if ev every website doesn't have an API, no. But uh, like they're, they're pretty common. So you can look up like different APIs for uh, different websites and such if you uh, 
But like, no, not every website will have like its own API. Normally, uh, any website will have some documentation saying like what APIs are available for um, developers that you can uh, work with to uh, manipulate data on that uh, uh, website. Because uh, people want to make their websites data like easy to access so people can build apps and stuff for your website. <clears throat> so that's what an API stands for, Application Protocol Interface. So like an interface for their application, their website, and another application, you know, your website, to communicate with each other. OK, so we are almost done. Uh, we were just going to very quickly skim through uh, XML files. So let me go down here. OK, so um, as it says uh, right here, the most important thing for uh, you to know about XML files is at no point in this course are we going to actually work with XML files in our tests or uh, assignments. So uh, this is just for your general interest. So I imagine many of you will close uh, the stream right now, which I totally understand. But um, yeah, so XML files, uh, they're just another way to store data in a file. Uh, this time, instead of the data being stored in like a dictionary type format, like with a JSON, it's kind of like HTML. There's this hierarchy with tags that specify specific uh, values and attributes to that value. And they're stored in this uh, like parent-child hierarchy relationship that you see here. So to uh, write an XML file, I would just specify tags as need be and save my file as a .xml. Um, XML files are kind of antiquated. I don't really, like, from my understanding, they're not really used um, as often as JSONs. Uh, they're used more in like older tech and such. Uh, so here is the Python code to read an XML file. But once again, we're not going to do this um, in this class. But yeah, it's very similar to like reading HTML. Like we try to look up particular stuff by reading by checking for particular tags. Like if any of you are familiar with um, HTML, it's very similar where you can specify tags or um, classes and stuff like that for uh, different, um, you can specify uh, classes for different uh, XML tags and so on. Cool. And likewise, here's the code to read an XML and to, uh, I don't think we have an example of writing to an XML. Uh, but here's an example of an XML file that I'll open up. So as you can see, it's just a bunch of tags uh, nested inside of each other. And to read this, I would kind of iterate through all of the text, or I would parse it as an XML to get all of the tags. And I'd iterate through all of the tags and like try to pull out tags with specific names and values and so on. And uh, as the slides say, it's very similar to uh, HTML. So with an HTML uh, you know, page, like if I go here and I click on uh, view page source, you see we have all of these HTML tags. Well, if I ignore the JavaScript, we have all of these HTML tags that store the data uh, accordingly. And XML instead of HTML is another way of storing this data inside of tags. But HTML contains uh, markup specifically, so we can style and uh, make our data appear nice. XML uh, is not for styling. It's just for um, storing and manipulating data. OK, so that is all of the content I had and questions I had to, to pose to you. Do you guys have any questions for me that you'd like to ask me? If you have any questions at all, please post them in the chat, and we can talk about them in more detail. And I can turn on my camera once again. And uh, if not, then have a great uh, rest of the day. It's such a nice day outside. And uh, yeah, you'll have Nick back again uh, next Monday. So take care. But if you have any questions, just let me know in the chat. <clears throat>
We have 22 people. Okay. Am I... <clears throat> so if you have any questions at all, please let me know and I'll answer your questions as best as, as best I can. If you don't have any questions, then uh, I have nothing else to add to today's class. <clears throat> we have 14 people. Okay. How long will it take for us to get to single digits? We have 10 people, okay. And there are like 180 kids in this class or something or about that much. Okay, I'm going to turn off my camera. <clears throat> my my uh, sorry, I'm gonna turn off my shared screen. I'll stay on for another minute and then I'll be signing off. And I'll probably be going back to bed. How did the number grow? Who locked back in? Who came back on? Okay, we have nine people. You're stuck at nine people. You have seven people. Okay, so I'll be logging off now. You guys have a great uh, semester. Take care and goodbye.